All right, we are back with more Athlon 200 GE coverage. This just arrived in the mail, and I'm about to put it into my MSI motherboard, which, of course, if you uh, watched my previous video or you've sort of seen some hardware news lately, you know that MSI motherboards, at least uh, probably through uh, an accident, uh, have had the 200 GE multiplier unlocked for overclocking, so the goal here is to see if we can overclock this thing to about 3.8 gigahertz using the stock included cooler, which by the way is not the same cooler that's included with Ryzen chips. So let's go ahead and uh, open this thing up. I have already cut the sticker. Um, and of course, just like most other AMD packaging, you have the processor itself. This is the 200GE, two cores, four threads. Uh, you have some uh, documentation here. And then we have the heatsink, which if you had an FX processor or some of the older generation AMD processors in general, it'll look quite familiar to you in so much as the design is the uh, old clip mechanism, which the AM4 motherboards do come with the clips, obviously, um, but they do require actually that you remove the uh, plastic clips that this type of cooler attaches to if you're going to use something like the Wraith Stealth. Uh, cooler because it uses the back plate to screw into instead of using those clips. However, this is significantly thinner. There's less metal on this cooler than pretty much every other cooler. In fact, I might have one. So this is the 860K, which uh, comes with the same cooler that a lot of the uh, old FX processors came with. And this one was painted, but here's the point. Uh, old cooler, it's about this thick and this is the new cooler so obviously there's going to be less cooling capacity neither of them have any copper on them they're just aluminum heat sinks so uh, this cooler does not have much cooling capacity uh, looks like I have a different fan though I used to have one of these uh, old FX coolers that had this type of fan on it so uh, maybe the fans gone through some iterations in general but uh, not much cooling capacity here so I don't know how much of an overclock we're gonna get with the stock fan but we're definitely gonna find out. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get my BIOS on the MSI board updated and uh, get the 200 GE in and get overclocking and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, and now that we have the CPU installed, we're gonna go ahead and run a stress test at stock settings. Absolutely nothing has been changed, including the memory clocks. Just everything is straight up stock. We're gonna see what kind of temperatures we run into by just running a uh, simple CPU stress test under Ida64 conditions. Now I'm not gonna run the FPU, which would give me a warmer temperature. I'm gonna run the CPU stress test because that'll be a little bit closer to the type of temperatures that we might expect at absolute worst case gaming loads. Um, whereas the FPU tends to stress things a little bit further beyond what you would typically see in a gaming workload. So let's go ahead and run this and see where we end up. And it's also worth noting that our clocks did jump immediately to 3.2 gigahertz, which we're hoping to be able to just blow out of the water with our overclock. Also voltages look like they're running at just over one volt on the CPU. Okay, so I was just getting kind of a baseline here, and uh, after about eight minutes under the stress test, we're only seeing temperatures of about 38 degrees, so this is not a hot CPU. I am gonna go ahead and run the FPU now just to see what type of temperature spike that would give us. All right, so it looks like we've reached sort of equilibrium pretty quickly by running just the FPU test. And obviously we did see a significant temperature bump there up to 47 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this test down and we're gonna head back to the uh, UEFI now and uh, hopefully give it a little bit of an overclock and see where temperatures lie there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the overclock settings now and we are gonna change this to, I don't know, let's try 35. And it does show that it's adjusted to 3500 megahertz. Obviously, the proof will be when we actually load up Ida again and see what the clock speeds are. And we are gonna go ahead while we're here and set the XMP profile to profile two, which is gonna be CPU limited to 2666, or rather 2667 megahertz according to the uh, BIOS there. And the reason I wanna go ahead and set this is I want my memory just dialed in from the get-go so when I do finally fine tune a CPU overclock, it doesn't get messed up at all by then overclocking or up clocking, however you wanna look at it, 
the memory. So we're gonna go ahead and just set the memory here and hopefully everything works just fine. And also for the moment, I'm gonna leave the CPU core voltage the same. If we need to up it, we can always do that. And now that we are back into Windows, we see that we do in fact have that 3500 megahertz overclock. I do wanna go ahead and double check the memory speed. And there in the memory, we do see exactly half of that 2667. So the memory is indeed set where we want it. So uh, everything seems to be good to go. Let's go ahead and run just the CPU test again. This is not the, uh, the FPU, this is just the CPU test. And let's go ahead and see what happens to these temperatures with uh, an overclock of 3,500 megahertz on this CPU. And I also am curious what voltage we're looking at. So we're jumped up to 1.3 volts and that is on auto voltage. Now there's always a chance that we could drop that voltage down a little bit and keep the uh, clocks where they are. But let's see what kind of temperatures we hit with that auto voltage at 1.3. So we've only been running the CPU test by itself for a couple of minutes now, and you'll notice, and I think it's probably just because there's so little mass to this heat sink, that the temperature stabilizes extremely quickly, probably the fastest I've ever seen. And like I said, I attribute that to probably just being a very low mass heat sink. So that heat just uh, saturates the heat sink extremely quickly. It reaches an equilibrium temperature extremely quickly once the fan ramps up, which is probably why we saw actually the temperature dip a little bit uh, once the test got going. So I am gonna go ahead and swap over to the FPU test and uh, see what kind of temperatures we're hitting with just the FPU. And now we're running just the FPU test and we almost immediately jumped up to 65 degrees C. I'm guessing it's actually probably gonna stay about 65 degrees C just based on what this heat sink sort of uh, heat curve has been as tests have gone along. It might jump up another degree or two, but uh, 65, 66 is probably where it'll stay, but we'll still let the test run for a couple few minutes just to see where the equilibrium is. Okay, and now we have been going on the FPU test for a couple of minutes, and like I guessed, it is 66 degrees Celsius. That temperature is not really gonna move at all from here on out. It might jump a degree or drop a degree here or there, but for the most part, 66 degrees Celsius at 1.3 volts. And let's double check to see voltage is still 1.304. So let's go ahead now and go for 3.8 gigahertz. I'm gonna just leave the voltage alone, just leave it on auto and see what kind of voltage the auto setting gives us. And then we'll test to see how hot the chip gets at 3.8 gigahertz on this stock cooler. Okay, so we are back in Ida once again, and you'll notice that we are now running at 3.8 gigahertz. And we're gonna go ahead and run that same just CPU test, not the FPU. We're gonna run the CPU stress test, see if our temperatures remain, you know, sort of under control. And if we pass a few minutes of the stress test, and the temperatures remain under control, we'll go ahead and shuffle back to the FPU test again to see what the like worst case, absolute awful scenario would be for this CPU under full load. And just for our reference, we are once again at that 1.304 volts. So I don't suspect we'll see a gigantic temperature difference from what we were kind of seeing beforehand. We are running right now at 55C. And again, with such a small cooler, I imagine we're not gonna see that change a whole lot in the next few minutes, but let's see if it sort of passes a three or four minute stress test here. Okay, so we've just been over three minutes and like I suspected, the temperature hasn't done much. It's actually come down a couple degrees, down to 53 degrees Celsius. So again, I'm gonna flip over to the FPU test. I'm actually gonna run the FPU for a little bit longer this time, just to make sure that it is stable and gonna be an overclock that you know you could actually use on a day-to-day -day basis, not crash out of games and that sort of thing. And then if it is stable, we'll go ahead and continue pushing it a little bit harder. All right, so we have been going along now for a little over 10 minutes on the FPU test, and you'll notice that we are running at 69 degrees Celsius right now, and the stability test hasn't shown any signs that this is in any way unstable at 3.8 gigahertz. Popping back over to the voltage, you'll notice that we are exactly still at 1.304 volts, and the clock speeds have not changed whatsoever either. They are still at 3.8 gigahertz. So this chip, even though it has a tiny cooler on it, 
doesn't really need a big cooler on it because it is just not a hot chip at all, but you can at least push it up to the uh, core clocks that we're seeing on the first generation of the uh, Ryzen chips anyways, that sort of 3.8 to 4.0 gigahertz, but we're gonna keep pushing it. We're gonna try for now 3.9 gigahertz. And again, we're gonna leave uh, the uh, voltage on auto just to see what it does with voltage, also to see if we need to step in or if we can just let that continue to go. Hopefully it stays at 1.304 and also remains stable. And we're seeing sort of the same thing here again, a fail out at uh, 1.3125 volts. Uh, so what I'm gonna do actually is go ahead and get a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna probably bump it up to about 1.32 volts and see if we can get it stable there. If we can't get it stable at that voltage though, uh, my fear here is that the uh, the temperatures are just gonna be too high at that point for us to remain stable if we even keep bumping the voltage with this cooler. So then the second thing I'm gonna try if I can't hit stability there is actually to go the other way with voltage and see if it's not heat reduction that I need. Maybe the cores actually can run at the speed without a problem, but maybe 1.3 volts is actually too much voltage for these cores. So we're gonna try both and see what happens. I mean, might as well, right? So that about wraps it up for this just sort of quick and dirty overclock of the Athlon 200GE. With the stock cooler, I hit 3.8 gigahertz at 1.304 volts, um, at least according to Ida, that was the voltage. The memory was no trouble at all to run at 2667 megahertz, and that was a 3000 megahertz kit of G-Skill Trident Z. So uh, your mileage will vary with RAM depending on uh, what type of kit you have. And if you are getting an Athlon 200GE, by the way, I don't think I'd recommend getting Trident Z RAM. I would typically probably recommend getting about as cheap RAM as possible. And hopefully you can hit that 2667 megahertz or you just get 2666 RAM and run it at its rated speed. But yes, the MSI X370 SLI Pro Plus or whatever exactly this motherboard is called. X370 SLI Plus from MSI confirmed you can in fact overclock the 200GE, which is supposed to be a locked processor. It is not on the November on the November BIOS of the uh, MSI boards, at least this particular board. I can confirm that it works. And uh, I will be testing games next up, I believe, with this uh, processor overclocked. I'm also planning on passively cooling this thing with this Alpine AM4 passive cooler by Arctic. They sent me this a little while back. So I'm definitely gonna try this thing out on this Athlon 200 GE since it's such a low power part. I have no doubt at stock temperatures, this thing should be able to handle it, but I am very curious to see if I can passively cool it with the overclock. Regardless, much more testing to come. I will get my overclock sort of fine tuned a little bit more. Hopefully I can still hit that 3.85 gigahertz and remain stable. We shall see on that front. Don't really have the time to devote to it right now. I can tell you out of the box, just hit the multiplier up to 38 and really leaving voltage auto, there's a good chance it looks like that you'll be able to hit 3,800 megahertz out of the box with an MSI motherboard. But that's it from me. I will leave, you know, social media right here. If you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things. Uh, I'll leave some YouTube videos around my face right about now in case you wanna watch more of me. And uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware. I'll see you guys in the next video.